Oh, good morning, every one of you. We welcome you this morning to a mighty worship experience. We welcome you to the South Liberty Missionary Baptist Church, 165 East Dinkin Street, Canton, Mississippi. This is the city of the light, and from this place, which we proclaim is the light in dark places, we proclaim the light of the world, who is Jesus our Christ. Won't you join in with us today as we make ready to have an exciting worship experience in his holy name. Come on, stay tuned with us and we welcome you right now to this glorious occasion on this glorious day at this glorious, glorious time. Our choir is coming to lift their voices and hug you through the form of a welcome song in which we say we welcome you to South Liberty Missionary Baptist Church. Come on, choir. God bless your heart. We certainly do welcome you to South Liberty Missionary Baptist Church where we are rich in history, relevant in this community, and ready for eternity. God is going to bless you real good for your choice to follow his guide and join with us today for this worship experience. Won't you at this moment join with us as we uplift our hands, as we uplift our hearts as we uplift our Savior, for he is holy. And not only is he holy, but he has declared that we too would be holy. Not only is he holy, and has he declared that we be holy, but he is God in three persons, blessed Father, blessed Son, and blessed Trinity. We lift him today. For Jesus said, if I be lifted up, I'll draw all men unto me. Come on, help us lift him today as we sing. Holy, holy, holy.
amen, amen. Our God is a faithful God. God in three persons, he is the blessed Trinity to whom all praises are due this morning. In that vein, our choir will come and lead and lift praises unto him. We ask that you might help us to praise his holy name on this great morning. Praise the Lord in here. Song says, I came to lift him up. He's the joy of my salvation. Says, I came to lift him up. He's the ruler of all nations. He says, Will you help me lift him up? Will somebody help me lift him up?
I know it's early in the morning, but the psalm is declared early in the morning will I seek thee. Can we lift him up this morning? Can you lift him up right there where you are? Will you lift him up? Come on, lift him up. He deserves to be here. He needs to be here. He has to be here. Lift it up. Somebody help me. Lift him up because I came not to see what anybody had on. I came not to do this, that, and the other, but I came to lift up the name of the Lord because he has been so good to us. You ought to just declare that right there, wherever you are this morning. Declare that he's been so good to you. Open doors for you. Open your eyes this morning. Started you on another day's journey. He's been good to you, and somebody ought to help me lift him up. so good been so good been so good been so good watched over me all night long woke me early early this morning called me in my right mind ain't he been good been so good so will you help me? Will you help me? Somebody help me! Oh, now lift him up right there, right there with your hands. Lift him up. The hands that he gave you, lift him up with the feet that he gave you. Lift him up with the voice that he gave you. We may as well do it according to Psalm number 150. Psalm number 150 says praise him, praise him for his wonderful works. Praise him for his marvelous act. Praise him for his exceeding gladness. Then he began to speak to music instruments. He said praise him upon the string instruments and organ. Praise him in the timbrel and the dance. Praise him on the high sounding cymbal. Praise him, praise him. But then when he gets through talking to the inanimate objects he then speaks to God's greatest creation. He speaks to you and I and he says let everything that has breath praise the Lord. From your lips you ought to declare hallelujah this morning. Somebody shout hallelujah. Come on somebody give him the highest praise. I know it's early but he deserves a hallelujah. Hallelujah. Salvation and glory, honor and power to the Lord, to the Lord our God. Can I just say this right quick? For the Lord our God is mighty, and the Lord our God is omnipotent, the Lord our God. That, that's just my praise this morning. Y'all, y'all. Salvation and glory. Honor and power. To the Lord our God. For the Lord our God. Right there, little while. He is, he is one. He is, he is. Somebody know he's wonderful out there. Somebody know he's been mighty, 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 mighty good to you. Thank you, choir. Thank you. Thank you, choir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you this morning. I believe that all would agree with me this morning that our God is almighty. And 
that he not only is almighty, but he is omnipotent. He's all-knowing. Not only is he almighty and omnipotent, but the Lord our God, he is wonderful. Come on with me this morning. It's so wonderful that he gave us 66 books to tell us the story. He's not the typical capitalist because the capitalist would have taken all 66 books, split them, and sold them separately for $19.99 apiece. This great God that we serve inoculated these 66 books written over a 1,500 year period of time by at least 20 different authors wove them together, placed them in our hands that we might come to relate to him more clearly, walk with him more nearly, and love him more dearly. In the sacred text today, won't you join me at the seventh chapter Paul's letter to the Romans, Romans, the seventh chapter, seventh chapter of Romans, glory to God, oh how great our God is, we want to begin our reading at the 13th verse there, in the seventh These words are recorded there. Verse 13 says, Was then that which is good made death unto me? God forbid. But sin, that it might appear sin, worketh death in me by that which is good, that sin by the commandment might become exceedingly sinful. Congregation. For that which I do, I allow not. For what I would, that do I not. But what I hate, that I do. Congregation. Now then, it is no more I that do it, but sin that dwelleth in me. Congregation. For the good that I would do not, but the evil which I would not, that I do, congregation. I find then a law that when I would do good, evil is present with me, congregation. But I see another law in my members, warring against the law of my mind and bringing me into captivity to the law of sin, which is in my members, congregation. All together we declare, I thank God through Jesus Christ our Lord. So then, with the mind, I myself serve the law of God. But with the flesh, the law of sin. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading, the hearing, and the doing of his holy and divine word. This morning, not only has our word exposed sin for what it is right here in today's text, and, and we'll speak on that a little bit more deeply uh, after a while, but... Our word also exposes man's need to pray. So much so that the Bible declares that man ought to always pray. 
another place. He says we ought to pray without ceasing. And the reason we pray and ought to always pray and ought to pray without ceasing is because not that, listen, not that we continue to, to, to approach heaven asking for all of this, these things that we want. But we continually posture ourselves before our God in prayer because we recognize that the issues of our moment are not ours. The burdens are not ours. The stresses, the trials, trials and tribulations do not belong to us. They all belong to him. And casting them on his shoulders is the best thing and the most healthy thing that every last one of us can and need to do. This morning, let's cast our cares on he who cares for us. It's prayer time. If you have a prayer request, we certainly would pray with you and touch and agree with you this morning. It's calling that name in this place, lifting it before our Lord and Savior. I want to pray this morning. Certainly for Brother Fred Jackson, the entire Jackson family, as he just laid to rest his son just this past week. Thank all of you that were in attendance there that uh, Thursday morning. But how many know we need to be praying for his comfort, that the Holy Spirit would surround the entire family and help them through these next few months and years. Not only do we pray for him, we pray and thank God for Deacon and Sister Rochelle Ali. God is so good. Brought Deacon Ali through another uh, procedure on this past Friday. And we continually pray that both of them would continually recover rapidly. Not only that, we pray for our dear sister Brandy Henderson. has fallen ill this morning and we want to lift her up in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. God is just a mighty God, able to do exceedingly and abundantly above all that we may ask or think. If there are prayer requests on your heart this morning, send them, send them. We lift them to the Lord on your behalf this morning. I'm going to ask our very own Deacon Nicholson to come and lead us in prayer this morning. Shall we pray? Eternal God, our Father, we come now with bowed heads and humble heart. Father, we come as humble as you know how. Lord, we thank you for giving us another opportunity to come in the house of the Lord just one more time. Lord, we just thank you for this day you have made, Lord, because it's not that our goodness that we're here, Lord, but it's because of your goodness that we're here, Lord. But for it's your blessings, Lord, that's, do, that's constantly keeping us, Lord, that we cannot keep ourselves, Lord, which we looked up to hear from which comes our help, which all our help comes from you, Lord, and we trust in you, Lord, for our help. We trust in you, Lord, for the strength to give us the opportunity to serve you to do your will, Lord. We trust in you, Lord, not to lean to our own understanding, Lord, but to do your will, Lord. We trust in you, Lord, to help us in these things what we need to do, Lord. Let us know. Let us, let us warn that your words that warn that lack wisdom, Lord. Let them ask of you, Lord. So we're asking for the wisdom and understanding to do your will, Lord, that we won't try to do it out in our own strength, Lord. Realize, no, God, there are things that we can't do in our own strength, Lord, knowing, Lord, that you can, we can do all things through you, Lord. Lord, we thank you, we thank you for the, uh, ask your blessing on all the sick and bereavement. And Lord, for we ask you to forgive us all our sin. And thought, word, and deed. Thing we may have said or done a thing we may have left undone. We ask for forgiveness right now, Lord. Forgive us right now, Lord, for those things, Lord. Lord, we thank you for your word, Lord, which your word is true and established in heaven, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for dying on the trough for us, Lord, dying here below. Paying a sin debt that we couldn't pay for a sin debt, Lord, that you didn't even owe, Lord, but it's your goodness that you thought was all fit to keep us here, Lord. And we thank you, Lord. 
Help her to do those things, Lord. Help her to learn to use our spiritual gift, Lord, you have given to bring you glory, Lord. Lord, we're here now to bring you glory, Lord, that we, they that worship you must worship you in spirit and in truth, Lord. Help us to worship you in spirit and in truth, Lord. Help us to do those things, Lord, not to try to please ourselves, but the things that going to bring you glory, Lord. And Lord, the one that that's sick, Lord, let them know, Lord, that they're not alone, Lord. Let them know that only you, Lord, can do everything to heal them, Lord. Even though they seem like there's no help, Lord. Knowing that realize no God that you have to last say so that you can do all things, Lord. God. Help us to run this race that you have prepared for us, Lord. Help us to bear this trust you have prepared for us. Help us to lead and follow your direction, Lord, and not ours. Help us to not stray away to the world, Lord, but help us keep our mind to stay on you, Lord, to do those things that gonna bring you glory. Lord. Do those things that keep your people, Lord. Do those things, Lord, that some people might even not even know about you, Lord, that we bring things to them, Lord. Help us to deny ourselves, Lord. Of, 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 we cannot please you in the flesh, Lord, but we want to do those things that please you and to bring you glory, Lord. Help us to do it your way, not our way. Fill us with your compassion, Lord, that we may see our brothers and sisters as you see them, Lord. Fill us with your courage, Lord, that we, that we may uh, give our life in the church as you gave your life for us, Lord. And Lord, fill us with the spirit of wisdom, Lord, that we may want to do not just our will, but your will, Lord. Lord, we just thank you, Lord. We can't thank you enough, Lord. We thank you for your mercy. We thank you for your grace. Thank you, Lord, for being the wonderful counselor, mighty God, everlasting Father and the Prince of Peace. Thank you, Lord, that knowing you is dealt. And all this is going on, Lord. We thank you, Lord, that we can rest in you, Lord. Lord, help us to rest in you and not rest from you, Lord. Help us to do that, Lord. And let us know that that let us know, Lord, that you are on our only hope. You are only hope for this pandemic we got going on, Lord, that, that through you, Lord, because you not, did not give us the spirit of fear, Lord, but we, we trust in you, Lord, whatever the outcome, Lord, well, you know, you in control of it, not man, but Lord, you in control of this thing, you in control of our life, Lord, help us to keep you the head, Lord, keep you the head of our life, Lord, help us to look, keep looking to the heaven which come in our help, Lord, which knowing that you are you know, the mighty God, you are the one that Speak and warn, lay down. You are the one that speak and warn, get up. You are the one that know that sickness is not all the way to death, Lord, the one that's sick, Lord. You are the one, Lord, that we know that you got the last say, so you know, doctor got the diagnosis, but you got the prognosis. Lord, we thank you for that, Lord. Lord, ask the master man of God bring your word, Lord. We pray for eyes to see, ears to hear, and the heart to comprehend and receive the Holy Spirit had to say to us, Lord. For one that don't know you, Lord, let them know. Let the word touch them, Lord. Touch everyone that's out there to sign my voice, Lord. Let them know that it's you. You are the answer, Lord. The world is not the answer, but you are the one. You are the one, Lord, that can straighten up the White House, Lord. You are the one that can do everything. You are the one that knows the outcome of this whole thing, Lord. You are the one that holds the answer, Lord. We think we know, Lord, but we know that you know because you got the answer. You know our past. You know our our presence. You know everything, Lord. So we trust in you, Lord, to keep up. We trust in you, Lord, that we go out in the byways and stuff to keep up. We trust in you, Lord, in our home for our children. We trust in you, Lord, to protect our children in school, Lord, and stuff. We trust in you, Lord, to keep us when we leave our first leave our house, Lord. We trust in you, Lord, to let you know, Lord, we can catch it in our house. We can catch it on the highway. We can catch it in. But we trust and rest in you, Lord, to do those things, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for this day, because we didn't have to be here, Lord. We just thank you for, for giving you all for just being who you are, Lord. You don't, your ways are not like our ways, your thoughts not like our ways. We thank you, Lord, for seeing beyond our faults, Lord. Instead of giving us another chance to get it right, Lord, and we can't get it get right. We might slip, Lord, but we know we can turn in here. We'll come back here. We'll come back to you, Lord, that you will be with us, Lord. And we know we rest in you, Lord. You'll lead us in the right direction, Lord. All these blessings I ask in your son Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. We certainly continually, continually lift up Mr. J.D. Kelly. We certainly lift up the Brown family. We certainly join with you and we lift up Emmanuel McKinnis and Kendrick Johnson. I want to ask that we not stop praying for all those on our hearts and minds. We want to ask that you remember to continually pray for those who were in the pathways of these past two hurricanes, many of the Louisiana residents were impacted severely by these storms. 
hearts. Uh, we certainly pray for all things to be well. We pray that God's will would be done uh, with regard to this upcoming election. We pray that peace would prevail in this land and across the globe. We pray for you, that God would bless you real good, and that today would be the day that you hear him as clear as you've heard him all year long, and that today you might move as his spirit commands. Can we give our great God a hand clap of praise this morning? Oh, come on. I said, God, I'm talking about the one who watched over you last night, the one who woke you up this morning, the one who started you out on another day's journey, the one who gave you health and strength, the one that's given you a job, the one that has blessed you to be where you are and doing as well as you are even right now. He and he alone deserves our praise. This morning before our choir comes, I want to just take a moment to share several things that are on the table this morning that I need to make you well acquainted with. I want you certainly to go out and uh, be reminded that we have the Children's Church uh, out on Facebook Live. That Children's Church each week uh, provides a message uh, in the form of a Bible study or a Sunday school lesson over uh, Facebook Live or either uh, Instagram or whatever social uh, networking uh, tool that they, uh, they choose to use that weekend. They reach out to all of our young people. And this past weekend, uh, the 18 to 24-year-olds, the 18 to 24-year-olds had uh, their uh, monthly uh, service. And it was just a blessing. Uh, please, uh, you don't have to be 18 or 24. Uh, I watched it just on yesterday, uh, and I'm neither 18 nor 24. And even if you add them together, I still am beyond that age. But still, nonetheless, watched as Sister Gail Vance blessed with a mighty word. Ble Did anybody else get that blessing? She blessed with a mighty word from God. And we just are excited, ecstatic about all that God is doing in this season, allowing us to grow through this, not just to go through this. What a mighty God we serve. So please, ma'am, always go and check that particular platform out. want to remind every parent, every parent, that has a child five years old and below, five years old and below, that their uh, week is this week, and on Wednesday night, uh, please, ma'am, please, sir, if you have a child between those ages, please stop by uh, here on Wednesday evening, Wednesday evening between the hours of 6 and 8, between the hours 6 and 8, uh, and the supplies for your young person will be available to you. I understand that they'll be getting a, a box or some crafts that they're to go and complete, uh, and then all of that would come together on a social network uh, platform. So we're excited about all the many ways that we are worshiping and in, enlisting our young people in the worship of our risen king. And so can we can praise God for that this morning? Can we praise, praise God? Yes, yeah, 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 please. Not only that, want to remind every one of you that this month, at the end of this month, in fact, the last Saturday of this month, we will hold what's being called Praise in the parking lot. Praise in the parking lot. And I don't know if you noticed when you drove up or if you uh, have noticed as you've driven by, we got a brand new parking lot to praise the Lord for. Oh, glory to God. Y'all ain't helped me here. God is just so good. These deacons and trustees have continuously been working and working and working to get all things done before everyone comes back into these doors in large numbers and they have done a marvelous job. We're excited about all that's happening so much so that we're ready to now get our praise on in the parking lot. This will be the last Saturday and this month between the hours 2.30 and 5.30. Want to ask that you would help us. This is an effort to keep our young people from going to strangers and asking for candy uh, under, under the guys of this, this uh, holiday that we as Christians do not celebrate, but what we want to bring them out for is hallelujah time, a time where they can come and give God praise and get a word from God, enjoy the fellowship of other believers, and then receive 
some treats. We ain't, gonna, we ain't got no tricks for them, but we got some treats. Amen, somebody? So please, ma'am, please, sir, will you help me? Will you help me? Will you help me provide treats for our young people? Will you help me? I ask, I ask, and our youth department asks that you would bring candy, bags of candy, as many as you can find, as much as you can find. We want you to bring it, and please donate it. When you come out on Wednesday or either Sunday, please bring it here in the foyer. There is a box that we want to uh, pack it with candy, bags of candy, individually wrapped candy, all of which will be placed in bags and given to our young people on the Praise in the Parking Lot event last Saturday in this month. Somebody shout last Saturday, the last Saturday, the last Saturday in this month. Please, ma'am, please, sir, you got up until then to get as much candy out here as possible. Amen, somebody. Amen, somebody. God is doing a mighty work. He is doing a mighty work. Just final reminder, I want to remind everyone, everyone, that all of our services on, on, sun, on first Sundays are held at 1050. They are filmed and broadcast at 1050. And the other services are 830. They begin now at 830. So please keep that in mind. Please place that on your calendar. 1050 on first Sundays, 830 every other Sunday. Praise God. And that's how we will close out this year along that schedule. Amen. Ain't God all right? Ain't he mighty good? Haven't he been good to you? We thank you for all that you are doing to support this ministry. We ask that you please do continue to give as you have been giving so that many great ministry works can continue to be done. Remember, you can access Give the Five and, and give to South Liberty Missionary Baptist Church, Canton, Mississippi, at your leisure. Our God is a mighty God. Our choir is coming. They're going to sing praises unto him one more time before we magnify his name through the word. That is Though the pressures in life Seems to get you down, down, down I just don't know Which way to turn God is concerned And he's working it out for you That child that's on cocaine Through pain He can make a change That marriage That's on the rise Although sometimes You have to walk up So you say to yourself I know that
Give our God praise, the God who cares, the God who's working it out for you. He's working it out for you right now. What you went to bed praying about last night, it's already been worked out. It's already been worked out. He dispatched angels on last night to take care of what you can't take care of. That's why we ought to pray, lift it to him, and believe that he's working it out. Anybody know he's working it out? Anybody? And what I like about it, you, you can feel in your soul when that thing has been turned over to God and you know he's working it out. I'm so glad about it that he's working out my money situation. He's working out my mental situation. He's working out my health, my medical situation. He's working out every situation for me. And because I know he's working it out for me, I know he's working it out for you right now where you are in your home. You ought to declare from your lips. I'm so glad that I know you. Hallelujah. Oh, bless his name. Oh, bless him. They starting to wake up in here this morning. Oh, bless his name. Oh, bless his name. Oh, bless his name. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. And let us exalt his name together. I'm so glad to know he cares. And he's working it out. Glory to God, 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 glory to God. Come on. Come on, come on, come on. Let's go, let's go to Romans 7. Everybody want to cut up now. It's 9.30. Everybody want to cut up now. And woke up now, you want to cut up now. You should have done that at 8.30. Should have done that at 8.30, 8.30, 8.30. CDC say we can't be out here too long. Glory to God. Hallelujah. I feel good in my soul. This morning, so good. Starting to see so many members are beginning to come on back this way. Amen. Amen.
Amen. I want to declare to you, if God has released you to return, we won't restrict you from returning. Amen, somebody. If God has released you, we won't restrict you. Glory to God. Just a blessing to see Sister Virginia this morning. Such a blessing to see Harriet, Johnny Rake. Such a blessing to see you looking forward to some day real soon. Seeing everybody. Come on. Everybody ready for a word this morning? Ready for a word. Ready for a word. Hallelujah. Come on with me, Romans chapter 7. For brevity this morning. God bless you, Johnny. God bless you. Jay, but Mr. Van, sir. For, for brevity, let me just lift verse 24 into your sight and to your sound. Thank you, Crystal. Let me lift it for your seeing pleasure and your hearing pleasure. Just one verse of scripture which allowed me to if you'll allow me to preach it. It's going to take me a little time to preach it, but you'll get it before it's over with. Look what Paul says. Paul says to Connie, O wretched man, that I am who shall deliver me from the body of this death the wretched man that I am who shall deliver me from the body of this death God bless you Neil. pray with me pray for me Father Son Holy Spirit how thankful we are that you are with us. Thank you that you have commanded us to be at this place at this particular time, attentive to your word through whatever means we have. Some tuning in by way of Facebook Live this morning. Some will see this broadcast via YouTube channel. Some are right now with us in this very place. We ask God that your Holy Spirit would do what it is that only he's able to do, and that is to teach, and to teach to reach. I pray that nothing that I do, nothing that I say, nothing that I am will hinder the great work, the healing that is to come through the, her the hermeneutic of this text. We pray, God, that you might bless, have your sovereign way, in Jesus' precious name, amen, amen, and amen. Glory to God. If I may this morning, I want to take an opportunity to tag today's text with this topic, a new normal. A new normal. I want to ask, as I have often asked you to do, and that is, Lean to somebody nearby. Ask that person this question, neighbor or neighbor, what were you doing? Chiron, to, to frame our time together this morning, it's not only helpful for you to answer the question, what were you doing? But additionally, it's good to answer the questions, what were you doing, how did you feel, and what was the result? As a reference point for each of these questions, Lakani, I'm led to ask, what were you doing? How did you feel and what were the results before, during, and after what I believe have been the most unforgettable moments since the turn of the century in which we've now enjoyed for 19 years, 9 months, 11 days, 9 hours, about 27 minutes and 30 seconds. The first of these three unforgettable experiences, this first unforgettable moment to which I refer Harriet was on September the 11th, 2001. 
Can you recall what you were doing? How you felt? And what were the results as you noticed that not one but three hijacked aircraft crashed into the World Trade Centers at 8.46 a.m. and 9.03 a.m. respectively. And then, if that weren't enough, at 9.37 a.m., another crashed into the Pentagon. What were you doing that morning? I can recall Yvonne being at work watching TV. I, I know I was at work, I was, but I was watching TV. I saw that horrific sight on the TV in my supervisor's office. I will, I will never forget my feeling of, of shock. The results that followed for me personally would be that I would miss the entire first year of my second child's birth as I spent that entire year in a foreign country. On a more public note, Johnny, the overwhelming result of that attack is still felt today as we had to embrace a new No longer, Janice, could we just walk directly onto aircraft. Since then, one must arrive at the airport two to three hours earlier if you think you're going to catch your flight. No longer can you sisters, my wife included, board flights with lotion and smell good and multiple handbags. We've thrown a many of Victoria's Secret away. She had to board Delta and American Airlines all those products from South America and Europe. In fact, nowadays, I, I can be seen used to, in the old days, Johnny, I would fly with my suit on. I would go from one place to another and go straight to the church and do a revival or whatever it is that I would do. But nowadays, when I'm going out, I got to own some short pants, some flip-flops. All because of the new normal. Secondly, Barbara, may I suggest, may I ask, what were you doing? How did you feel? And what was the result of the second unforgettable moment I'd like to call our attention to, which was November 3rd, 2008. November 3rd, 2008. It was on that night, Benita, that around 10.15 p.m., both Lady B and I were lying in bed with alligator tears of pride coming down both our cheeks as we witnessed this country elect its first black president. Very few things have stirred my soul like it did that night on which I've already shared where I was and how I felt. I felt prideful, but the results of that achievement caused a new normal in this country, the likes of which I had read and heard about but had never seen before. The reality of this black Achievement at the highest level brought with it a removal of the band-aid that covered American racism for many years. Can I preach this this morning? During those years, I lost respect for many a white colleague. I unfriended many of Facebook frenemies during those years. I saw the ugliness of racial prejudice up close and personal during those years. And that, my friend, was the catalyst that led to the making of Donald Trump, who has used it to build his brand on no plan except that of erasing the legacy of his predecessor. What's your health care plan? I don't have one. It's coming out in two weeks, though. What's your plan for the infrastructure? I don't have one. It's coming out in two weeks. What's your plan for climate change? There is no climate change. What's your plan for the virus? All oh, this just go away. There is no plan. So what if millions of people lose their health care? So what if those with pre-existing conditions are uninsured again? And so what if soldiers who struggle with their sexual identity never serve this nation in uniform so long as white power and white privilege is maintained? This was a 
this has given way. The election of Obama gave way to a new normal. In this new normal, black men are, ber are berated for just bird watching. In this new normal, black boys are gunned down while jogging in their own neighborhoods. In this new normal, one can be killed on national television or shot six times in their own home or fired from their jobs or suspended from their school for wearing a mask to highlight the fact that they believe their life matters. All of this is a new normal that happens after electing the 44th and first African-American president. I'm talking about a new normal. For the third and final time, Brittany, I invite you to recall what you were doing and how you felt and what was the result on March 22nd, 2020, when you watched for the first Sunday morning what has become the new normal of church services via social media in response to the coronavirus. By that Sunday, we had come to learn of an unseen pathogen ravaging the land and taking countless lives, most of which were the predisposed black and brown Americans. To be honest, can I be real with you? I was scared. Scared for my wife and mother who were frontline workers. Scared for my children and siblings. Scared for all of you trusted to my spiritual care. And scared for myself as I too have my own comorbidities. My emotion was one of fear. In the aftermath, we have been told to embrace, however, this new Because even though we still know little than we did about the virus, what we do know most is that the old has been and must be replaced by a new normal. I know it's hard to hear, Dick and Evans, but the old must be, has to be replaced by what we call a new normal. Though within the next few weeks, my hope and prayer is to resume in-person worship services, they too must adhere to a degree of newness. The new normal will likely include two services with one half of the membership in one and another half in the other. They will likely involve no congregate singing, no hugging, and no hand laying. They will likely be reduced from 180 minutes to 90 minutes. They will likely still be broadcast via social media. And they will likely more closely resemble what you've been watching than anything ever witnessed before. All because of a new norm. Brothers and sisters, this line of discussion is important not because, Kelly, not because I'm desirous to know where you were on September 11, 2001. It's not because I seek to understand your feeling about President Obama and neither because I wish to provide you an advanced peek at what future services here will look like, but rather my aim is to help you understand this text. And this text is all about a church in the midst of a new norm. At the time of this text, Crowley, the Apostle Paul, is writing to the Christian church that is in Rome. Paul had never visited Rome, yet he wanted to, nor did he start the church there as he did many other churches. It's believed that either some Romans were in Jerusalem on the day of Pentecost and they heard Peter's preaching that day and they were one of the 3,000 that came to Jesus just as they were, received the Holy Spirit and they went back to their hometown of Rome and started a Christian church. When you get the Holy Spirit, you actually do something. You bring fruit for Christ. 
people. There's one belief that that's how the church at Rome was started. Another belief is there were some sisters who, who got together and started the church based off messages of Paul that they may have heard. But either way, it's not really important who started the church, how it started. It's not the, the main the meat of the message. The impetus of this text is how it would respond to the new normal that it was facing. Specifically, specifically, Rome and this particular church was filled with Jews and Gentile converts who had only known, watch this, one way. Let me say it again. Rome... This Christian church, this, this church, this, they had only known one way. You must understand that unlike you and me, these congregants did not have, watch this, Sandra, they did not have the complete body. All, all, all they essentially had was the Old Testament and, and, and the old King Solomon's temple that was erected there in Jerusalem. And their understanding then was on the old things that God had done. They, they, they didn't have Matthew's letter. They didn't have Mark's letter or Luke's letter or John. They, they didn't have 1 and 2 Corinthians, Galatians, Ephesians, Philippians, Colossians, 1 and 2 Thessalonians. They didn't have Titus, Philemon, Hebrews, James, Jude, Revelation. They didn't have those books would, would, wouldn't come till much later in history. They, all they had was the Old Testament and an old temple. They understood, watch this. Walk with me a little while, Benita. They understood, watch this, how to bring animals into the temple to atone for their sins. They, 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 they understood how to, to, to perform the, the acts of religion according to their religion they had to wear phylacteries and they had to wear zitzits and they had to wear yarmulkes they, they understood the, the, the nuances of the orthodox Jewish religion they understood the priesthood they expected there to be someone a priest standing in the middle of the temple who would take their sacrifices and then that person for a couple of times a year would go behind the veil to the place that those people could not go and that person would then offer sacrifices on their behalf. They understood that that's the way church works. Watch this. Isn't it interesting? That Jesus had caused Because of what Jesus had done, there, there, there was no more a need to blow a ram's horn. He, he no longer required a lamb for he had been that lamb. He required no sacrifice for he had been the final sacrifice. Y'all will praise him after a while. He required no priest for he would bring others to God himself. He, he rearranged the furniture in that temple by removing the veil. He had no use for the ark for he is the very presence of God. He says if you see me you have seen the father. The father and I are one. He reminded all that I am the way. I am the truth. I am the light no man come. I am the door and no man come to the father except by me in fact the only thing he required was not religion not an old empty ridiculous set of rules and religiosity but what he requires is relationship a relationship in which we can say, I trust you. I believe that you're who you say you are. You're the son of the living God. And I accept you as my personal son. So Paul.
Paul writes to this Roman church in the wake of their new normal and what Paul does in this, in, in this which is the longest letter he's ever penned was Paul preaches Paul preaches the gospel. What do you mean, Reverend? Well, in Romans 1, 16, well, we'll watch what he writes. He says, I'm not ashamed of the gospel. For it is the power of God unto salvation to them that believe it, to the Jew first. In Romans 2 and 11, he said, with God, there is no respect of persons. Romans 3 and 23, y'all know this one. He says, for the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is. Paul kept writing. I'm glad he did because in Romans 4 and 17, he said, God judges the quick and the dead. Romans 5 and 6, he said, in due time, Christ died for the ungodly. In Romans 6 and 8, he says, if we be dead with Christ, we shall also live with him. And then he gets here, the kind of in Romans 7 and 24. Look what he says. He said, oh, wretched man that I who shall deliver me, Nicholas? He recognizes how bad he is in chapter 7. Pastor, how you going to use chapter 7? And Paul talking about how bad he is to tell us about this new normal. Oh, it ain't hard. Come here and keep listening. Beloved, based on this reading of Paul, what we are called not to, to, to do is not to look back at our old religion, but rather to look back at our old relationship. Oh, God. Let me work here. This letter calls us to take a hard look at ourselves before the corona. This letter before, but this letter calls us to look at how were things before we had to spend some time away from the temple for a while? How were things before God allowed a pandemic that claimed the lives of over 200,000 people? How were we before this new normal? For the question in front of us today is with regard to our old normal. And what we are, what, and what, what the question is this, when you look at your old life and everything that happened prior to this pandemic hitting the world, what were you doing? And how did you feel? After having considered what your walk with God looked like in the old normal, which was before the church closings, I'd like you to envision what it needs to look like, watch this, in the new normal. The record is that no vaccine will be readily available until at least this time next year. That, that, that means that coronavirus will still be viral until this time next year. The record is that because we've shown our enemies our unpreparedness to deal with a biological hazard, it's likely that the U.S. may very well see or, and experience biological warfare with something far worse than COVID-19. We, 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 we've shown the world that we got some ignorant folks in America. We, we, we've shown the world that we got people so foolish that they would say, I ain't wearing no mask because it's a violation of my liberty. We, we, we got people so foolish that they would know through national news media that a man is infected by coronavirus so much so that he was hospitalized for almost a week. That same man caused a cluster super spreader event at his house. That same man now had a party and has produced no evidence that he was coronavirus free and yet people are foolish enough to go to the infected house to talk to the infected man because they infected with stupidity. We've shown our enemies. We've shown Kim Jong-un. We've shown Chinese. We've shown all those who hate us that 
we are vulnerable to biological death because we ain't got good sense. The record is this, not only is no vaccine going to be available for a while, the record is this, not only have we shown our inner enemies our soft targets, not only but this, should Trump be removed or remain in office, there's no telling what may be the outcome. In other words, brothers and sisters, even Stevie Wonder can see that if we ever needed the Lord to fall, we sure do need him right now. Today is the day to prepare Sister Johnny not to come back to church. Come here, South Liberty. South Liberty. Today is the day to prepare, but not to prepare to come back to church, but to come back to Christ and to trade our old normal of playing with the new normal of saying, Oh, wretched man that I am. Who shall deliver me? In light of all this, just give me five more minutes. I'm, in light of all this, let me, let, let me lift three new actions that normal people should take as a result of Paul's writing. Normal people should take these actions as a result of Paul's writing. Here's the first one. The first action that every normal person should take is this. Normal people should recognize, recognize their vulnerabilities. <clears throat> you should recognize your vulnerabilities. Just touch yourself and say, I got some vulnerabilities. Paul's point to this Roman church is that they don't need a service. They need a savior. All right, all right. In fact, in the, in the all too familiar passage, Paul writes us in, in chapter 3, uh, 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 Paul writes, excuse me, three chapters later in Romans 10 and 9, he writes this, this familiar scripture. He says, uh, he who whosoever believeth shall be saved. Am I right about it? The Greek word for saved that Paul uses that's there and in every other place throughout our New Testament, even to include places where we see the word Savior in relation to Jesus and when we see the word salvation, whenever we see saved, salvation, or Savior, all of it has the same meaning. And the meaning is, watch this, not that I go to heaven. The meaning is not that I go to heaven. The meaning is not that I appear great uh, and uh, uh, but, before the white throne as I'm sinless. That's not what the picture is of being saved. The picture of the word uh, etymology that we get from saved is simply to be delivered or rescued. To, to tell somebody I'm saved means that I've been rescued. It means that I've been delivered. Well, what have I been delivered from? Well, let me work with you a little while. I'm going to help you. To, to be delivered, watch this, to be delivered from being an alcoholic is to be rescued from dying of cirrhosis or some other kind of liver disease. To be delivered from smoking is to be rescued from dying of some type lung cancer. To be delivered from gambling rescues one from becoming broke or homeless. To be delivered from fornication and or adultery is to be rescued from sexual disease and debt and child support and having children reared without the presence of one of their essential parents. This is why we need Jesus as our Savior who, should we, who we should follow so that he can rescue us. Rescue us from what? What does he rescue us from? He rescues us from the sins that otherwise would make our lives miserable. How many know, live long enough to know sin makes your life miserable? That's why Jesus said don't do it. That's why the Bible is clear about what we should not be doing. Because when we do those things, they so destroy and distort the lives that we have that we trade in our abundance for some trouble. God wants us to be blessed. He wants us to live abundant lives. So he wants to rescue. He has to rescue us. Rescue us from what? He has to rescue us from sins. That's why that girl says, watch this, Lord, deliver me. Because all I seem to do, y'all catching it here, she needs deliverance from the sin. 
She needs something to help her stay away from those things that she struggles with on earth. It ain't just about going to heaven. It's about trying to stay out of hell on earth. Paul says, listen, y'all need a savior. Y'all don't need no savior. We need devotion, not devotion. You'll catch that when you get home. We need an altar fall, not an altar call. We don't need to sing amazing grace as much as we need to succumb. Paul makes the point that they should forget the old temple and forget the old traditions and forget the old normal because all those things were only supposed to show them what he recognizes in verse 18, which is, watch this, what he says in verse 18. He says, in me there is no good thing. Verse 18, he says, there dwelleth no good in me. For to will is present with me, but how to perform that which is good, I can't find. For the good that I would do not, but the evil which I would not, that I do. In other words, Paul said, I want to do right, but I struggle doing right. And I don't want to do wrong, but it's easy for me to do wrong. It's hard for me to do right, easy for me to do wrong. I'm struggling here, and the struggle is real, Paul said. About two weeks ago, about two weeks ago, one of our beloved members, one of our beloved member who knows that I love red velvet cake. Who will help me hold it? Baked me a nice red velvet icing falling off the side. Nuts. He even took the little peanuts, the little pecans, I mean, chopped them up with a chopper, and sprinkled them all around. Oh, Lord, I pray. Now, 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 watch this. My, my wife, who is a nurse, has me on a 1600 calorie diet per day. She wants me to make 60 years old. One piece of red velvet cake is 283 calories. Six slices of red velvet cake, which I ate that day, are 1,698 calories. I'm quite trying to tell you, I just six slices of my red velvet cake were equivalent to a whole day full of meals. <laughs> I didn't want to eat it. Set it on the counter. I looked at it. I said, don't do it, Barlow. Don't do it, Barlow. Don't do it, Barlow. Every time kill I pass by, I knew eating all that cake was bad for me. I even told myself, man, don't eat another slice. But something inside me kept saying, one more bite. You know, that's what sin does. It's good to us, but it's not good for us. And because it's good to us, something, Johnny Ray keeps saying one more puff. One more drink, one more time, and I'm going to quit. But the truth is, the only way to ever quit is to be delivered. My appeal is that all of us come to recognize our vulnerabilities with sins like my sin of gluttony and seek for the deliverance that only God can give. Can I keep preaching here a little while? Second new action that every normal person should take is this. We should, we should resist, we should resist our vices. 
resist our vices. Every one of us has some vices. Come on, somebody. You ain't got to wave your hand. Just look straight. I just shared with you that one of mine is sweets. A vice is by definition a bad behavior. It's not enough to just recognize our bad behavior, but we must resist them. James 4 and 7 says, resist the devil and he will flee from you. But right before that, James tells us how to resist the devil by saying, submit to God. The way to submit to God is to do what I call start knowing and, st and stop going. Knowing, N-O-I-N-G, I made it up, Keisha. Start knowing and stop going. What do you mean, Reverend? By that I mean to start saying no to your vice and then stop going in the direction where it is. In my case, the next time I get a red velvet cape, which is hopefully this week, I plan to say no. And I'm not going to say no to the whole cake, but I'm going to say no to eating six slices per day. Got to say no. The other thing I plan to do is to take it to my job. That's how I plan to stop going because I'm, I'm more likely to just eat it every now and then at work than I am at the house. To that end, sisters, you need to tell that boy, no! And don't go to his house no more. Brothers, you need to tell that sister, no! Go home and take a cold shower. Gambling addicts, you need to say no. And stop going to Vicksburg. It's a mall down there in Jackson. Shopaholics, you need to start saying no to Belk. And start going to the casino. Until that becomes a problem. And then you need to see rule number three. Pastor, I've tried this stuff before. I've tried, I've tried to do it before, I, and it's hard. Watch this. I know it's hard. It's going to be hard, and sometimes you might fall. But Paul wanted us to always know that a just man falleth seven times. But what it is that makes him just is that when he falls down, he gets right back up and tries to do right again. Yes, you may fail, but it, when you do, get back up and try to do right again in resisting these vices. That's why Paul says in verse 24, O wretched man that I am. Paul has recognized his vulnerabilities. He's recognized, watch this, he's recognized that he cannot make it in, in, in trying to do all that old religious stuff of, of bringing sacrifices and show bread and all that stuff in the old temple. He recognizes that the old way has passed away. He recognizes that there's a new normal and the new normal is him having nothing more than what God has given him which was grace and the grace that God has given him has allowed him to get the law and read the law and in reading the law Paul recognizes that he's way worse than he ever thought he was. Can I preach that to seven people in the house? You're way worse than you ever thought you were. We're not good. We're evil. Inherently evil. Innately evil. We come to this earth evil. You don't believe me? Your baby, your brand new baby who don't even know words can lie. Inside us is an innate desire to do wrong. That's why Paul says it's a wretched man. But watch this. I love the word he uses for wretched. He says talaparos, that word, it means patient and steadfast. In other words, it means I'm patient, but I'm pro progressing. When Paul says I'm wretched, he says that I realize, watch this, he says I realize that I got some issues, uh, but I'm working on them. I ain't, try, I, ain't, I ain't just around here letting the devil take me to and fro and do me any kind of way. I don't drink it just because the devil said drink it. I don't eat it just because the devil said drink it. I don't do this or do that, but what I do is I take it to the Lord and say, Lord, I got an issue. 
issue with sex. I got an issue with alcohol. I got an issue with this. I got an issue with that. I got an issue with overspending. I got an issue with overeating. I'm submitting to you. I'm lifting it up to you because I need somebody to deliver me because I'm tired of hurting me. He says, I lift it to the Lord. I lift that thing to the Lord. I got a lying tongue. I'm tired of lying. I got a gossiping tongue. I'm tired of gossiping. I got a negative spirit. I can't never see anything good. I always have to point out the bad. I, I'm hurting myself and I want to be better. Oh, wretched man that I am. Paul says, I'm trying. Oh, you ought to slap high five with yourself and say, I'm trying. Uh, it's tough, but I'm trying. It's, it's tough, but I'm trying. It's rough, but I'm trying. It's, I, I'm doing the best I, I can. I'm, I'm lifting it to the Lord, and I'm trying to stay away. I ain't eating that. I ain't eating that. I ain't eating that. I ain't answering that. I ain't answering that. I ain't that. I ain't calling back. I ain't calling back. I ain't calling back. In addition to watch this, to know I got going certainly to, to, to no more to, to you starting to do some knowing and some stopping and some going in addition to that certainly submission to God must involve what Paul describes in verse 22 I'm almost done with you verse 22 Paul says this he said what we need to be submitted to is God's word and God's ways and God's works verse 22 he says for I delight in the law of God after the inner man. Paul says, I, I, I recognize I got the issues. And he's telling the church, y'all need to recognize you got the issues on the inside. You're wretched. But, but if you get the word of the Lord, if you continue to submit yourself by getting your word, by praying, through fasting, through all of the many things that the Bible calls us into, if you will submit in those ways, then your inner man will have a little bit more strength in order to deal with the vices that you have. That's why David was able to write Psalm 119, 11, thy word have I hid in thy heart that I might not sin against you. The more words you have, the more words you can use against the devil when he says, his last thing so we can get out of here. Anybody get some help so far? The third new action every normal person should take is this. They should rejoice in their victories. It's exciting for me, Dick Evans, to tell you that not only should our new normal involve recognizing our vulnerabilities and resisting our vices, most importantly, Paul answers his own question when he says, who shall deliver me by telling the church that this new normal won't be as hard as you think because you already have the victory. Well, how do I have the victory? It's right there in verse 25. It's right there in verse 25. Verse 25 tells exactly who Paul recognizes as who's going to be able to deliver him. He said in verse 25, I thank God through Jesus Christ our Lord. I thank God through Jesus Christ our Lord because he is my reason to rejoice. He is my reason. He is my reason for victory because what he done by getting victory is he obtained victory for me so that I can recognize that in him everything is going to be all right. This means that, though Jesus, that through Jesus' words, I have the power to recognize my vulnerabilities. Through Jesus' works, I have the power in me to resist my vices. And should I fall every now and then, I have the power to get back up and try again. Because he got out of that grave with all power. So it's at the cross, at the cross, where I first saw the light. And the burden of my heart rolled. It was there by faith. I received my sight. And now, now, I'm happy all day. Come on, our choir 
is coming. Was your old normal happy? Was the way you lived just seven months ago codified by happiness? Was every day sweeter than the day before? Or were you worried and struggling and frantic? Half the time hung over, broke down, beat down, going from this to that and that to this, trying to fill your void with the chaos of the world which in no way can fulfill you. Jesus, he does that. He does that. He alone does that. Come on, talk to him quiet. Yesterday, just yesterday, I officiated a, a wedding. And I had counseled with this couple for multiple months. And the couple had told me that the wedding was going to be on October 10th at 4 o'clock. And it was going to be at their home. And so it was that I went there yesterday. About 10 minutes till I show up. And recognized that there was no body at the house. No car under the carport. No cars lining the streets to give the appearance that somebody get ready to get married here. No balloons anywhere, no confetti, no evidence at all. All the lights were off. I didn't even smell barbecue coming from the backyard. And so it was, I sit there in the parking lot, and I said to myself, ain't nobody getting married over here today. Called that groom, and I said, look, look here, man. Uh, where y'all at? Y'all done called the wedding off? He said, no, sir, I forgot to tell you that we moved the location. Sent me the location. And I made it over to the location just in time to go on and officiate this particular wedding. When I got there, it looked like a wedding was supposed to look. Everybody was happy. Everybody was arrayed in beautiful colors. Everybody was ready to see this couple join together. Brothers and sisters, God wants you to know you can't expect to get anything new parked at that old place. 
That old place has nobody under the carport. There's nobody there. There's nothing happening there. There's nothing getting ready to happen there. You got to move over to a new normal. The new normal is the place of happiness. It's the place of holiness. It's the place that God is working and moving and getting ready to wed you with some of your winnings in your next winning season. If you're ready to win, if you're ready to come on out of that old normal and ready to go into a new normal in which you are more tied to relationship than you are religion, you can do that right now. You can do that right now. If you want to be saved, Holy Spirit is speaking to your heart that this is your day and this is the message you needed to hear in order for you to make the necessary changes needed to be made in your life. That change can start now by you receiving Jesus as your Lord and Savior. It's a simple prayer. Just saying, I believe that he is the son of the living God. He did die on that rugged cross for my sins. And because of his work, because I've asked and believed, I can be delivered. I can be rescued. I can be saved from my own sin. Come on, receive him this morning. Pray this prayer with me, Father. In the blessed name of Jesus, I confess with my mouth, I believe in my heart that Jesus is the Son of the living God. Upon the profession of my faith in Jesus' death, burial, and resurrection, I accept him as my Lord and Savior, and thereby am saved. Not only that, Lord, I pray right now. I pray much for the backslider, that today they will slide back. I pray much, God, for all those that recognize their vulnerabilities through this word today. All of those who need power to resist their vices. And all those who have been victorious and been able to rejoice in the victories they've already recognized through the power of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Dear God, we thank you for this moment in time where we were able to share this word about a new normal today. And we thank you for all who received Jesus into their hearts by virtue of this wonderful worship experience. It's in Christ's precious name we pray. Amen and amen. Listen, beloved. Listen, beloved. If you accepted the Lord Jesus as your Savior, if you got saved, won't you reach out to us? Go out to our website, www southliberty.org www.s-o-u-t-h-l-i-b-e-r-t-y dot o-r-g there you will find telephone numbers to this location there you will find the address of this location there you will find an email request that you could just send and one of our many uh, church workers will be able to monitor that email and get that word so that we can get back to you and help you with the next step of your salvation. The next step of your salvation may involve baptism. Next step of your salvation will certainly involve you being in a Bible study, in a Bible-believing church where you can be taught the principles out of the Word of God that will help you live a more perfect life. We have Bible study every Wednesday here. You can join us this Wednesday, 7 o'clock p.m. via Facebook Live, via Facebook Live. God is blessed. We've had an incredible day. I want to say thank you to all of our ushers. Thank you to all of our nurses. Thank you to our choir. I want to say thank you to our trustees and deacons for all the great work that they're doing around the campus to make sure that it's ready within the coming weeks for a mass return of all of those who God has released. Remember, if God releases you, we will not restrict you. But that is your decision. We're excited. We're excited that over the next couple of three weeks, we'll be able to look upon your faces in person. All right, it's time for us to get out of here, leave this place, but never the presence of God. God is so good. God is so good. That Won't you receive your benediction? Now unto him who is able to do exceedingly and abundantly above that we can ask or think. To him be all honor, all glory, all dominion, and all power. And we all say, Amen. Ah.